Hey guys, got a new diagnostic job for you today. I think it might be an interesting one. Uh, vehicle is over at a used car lot. It is a 2010 BMW X5. That's going to be an E70 chassis. Um, shop called me up late last night. Uh, car sold and customer learns that the rear hatch will open with the push button, but it won't shut. So with those vehicles, if, if they don't shut with the push button, it's, it's a lot of effort to get closed. You really need that system to work right. So I'm thinking in my head, I've seen those a lot. A lot of the times it's just a broken wire in the, in the lift gate jam. So shot down there on my way home, peeled open the harness. Harness looks great. Um, look down inside the quarter panel trim, up inside the lift gate trim, the wiring looks good. So definitely doesn't appear to be a wiring problem. Um, did some quick voltage testing up at the actual... Um, the lift gate, uh, the lift gate uh, drive motors, they have um, uh, position sensors in them. So check for power at the position sensors. It has good power there. At that point, it was getting late, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to come back in the morning. We'll square this thing away. So that's what we're doing. We're going to go down there and check it out right now. All right, so I've identified, All right, so I've identified the vehicle in Ista. I have the vehicle running right now, as you can tell from the battery voltage. Um, it's a car lock car. It's got a weak battery, so I want to keep starting it and shutting it off. Cause I got a feeling it's not going to start one of these times, so we'll go into control unit tree, and I've that's all, that was only grayed out. That's the HKL. This is the module that we're we're dealing with. It was only grayed because I had it selected. Um, so let's go into display fault memory, and we can see that we have no fault code stored in the uh, liftgate module. You know we have a lot of faults for uh, power ma power management, um, IBS sensors, under voltage, all related to this battery being weak. So, you know, I hate diagnosing cars with weak batteries, but I, I feel pretty comfortable knowing that this fault that we're dealing with isn't battery related. So we're not gonna bother calculating a test plan. Uh, we're gonna go back to uh, vehicle information and we're gonna select the HKL. We're gonna call up control unit functions. So we're gonna go ahead and open the tailgate manually. So we'll push the button on the dash here. It opens like it should. And just for informational purpose, you can open the lift gate from the dash, but you cannot close the lift gate from the dash. That has to be done from the key or from the button on the lift gate. So if you are dealing with a fault where they feel like it's not working properly, just know that it won't close from that button on the dash. It has to be from the key or from the push button on the lift gate itself. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and select close lift gate. We're gonna activate component. And the lift gate can close on its own, so that's a good sign. So we will close this now. And let's go into service plan. And I've already done the search here. Um, just to, just to make things quicker for the video. But we're gonna go ahead and select um, HKL powertrain. We're gonna display that. And this is gonna pull up the test plan for the powertrain on the lift gate. And what's nice about this is it's gonna give us our wiring diagram on the right hand side. It'll give us some information on the left hand side about how the system works. Um, a couple warnings, like, um, you know, it, it lets you know that if, if it sees a fault, the drives are inhibited. inhibited. So, if it detects a fault code, it may shut off the drives. So at that point, you're gonna to wanna to go in and clear codes or perform a control unit reset to reactivate the drives. So if you do find a faulty drive in one of these um, and you replace it, you have to make sure you clear fault codes or do a control unit reset to get it back up and running. So if we look at the diagram here, we'll diagram. zoom in. And you can see this is the left side drive unit. And this is the right side drive unit on the right. And each drive unit has five wires. You have a power and ground feed, which is reversible for the for the motor drive. You have a um, terminal 30 feed for the hall sensor. And then you have two hall sensor signals per drive. So each drive has two hall effect sensors. And one thing you want to make note of with these cars is if the hall effect sensors fail, the hatch will probably open, but it may not close. So with that in mind, I want to take a look at the hall sensors. So we will go into the test module, we'll hit next. It says there's no fault code stored, which we know. We're going to continue with the test module anyways. 
Um, is there a complaint of water ingress in the luggage, luggage compartment? No, there's not. There's no traces of any water. I've been back there. And what we want to do is we want to go down to check hall sensor, identifying the position. And what this is going to do is this is going to show us the hall effect sensor position count ups as the module seeing it. So we'll hit next. It wants the tailgate closed to start. So with the tailgate closed, we see the left hand and the right hand are at zero increments. So we'll go ahead and we'll push this button again. And we see that the right hand hall sensor counted up to 1563. The left hand didn't count up. So we have a fault with the left hand um, hall sensors. So let's go ahead and hit next. It's going to ask you if they've moved accordingly. We're going to say no. We'll tell it was a left-hand drive that did not move accordingly. And it's going to tell you to check the lines of the following components. If the lines are good, then put a new lift, uh, lift drive in it. What I want to do is I want to go back to the liftgate module, and I want to scope those hall sensors. We'll scope all four of them. Um, I've already checked powers up at the drives, so we know we have power going to the drives, the hall sensors in the drives, but I want to see what the signals look like coming back down to the liftgate control module. All right, so we have the hall sensors back probed at the control module. We have all four traces running here on our Pico, and we are going to go ahead and wait for this to go to the next screen, and we're going to open the trunk. trunk is open so now let's go back and take a look at what we see here um, right off the bat we can see that channel 3 on Pico the green channel um, it does have a hall signal but it's much smaller than the rest of them so if we look at our hall signals we can see that channel C is only going from about nine tenths of a volt to about a volt and a half so we're dealing with about a half a volt swing, where the rest of them are going from about seven volts. You know, again, back down to nine tenths of a volt. We'll check them all while we're here. Channel B is going about seven to about a volt. Move this out of the way. Again, seven to about a volt. So all those are reading properly, however, our green channel has a much weaker signal, which reading that at the control module could mean that we do have a partially broken wire or, or high corrosion or high, sorry, high resistance in the circuit between the, between the sensor and the module, um, or we just have a faulty sensor. So back here at the module, we can see that our green trace is going to the green wire. So let's go take a look at our diagram and see which motor that's for and do some circuit testing. So looking at the wiring diagram, we can see that our green wire goes to the left side uh, drive unit. So let's take a look. What we want to do is measure from connector 19620, which is at the module, to connector 19621, which I believe is at the actual drive motor. But let's click on this connector and see if this will show us where it is. So what we'll do is we'll access that connector, we'll unplug it, and we'll load test the circuit from 1921 to 1920, which is on the control module, and make sure that that circuit is in fact intact. And if it is, then this vehicle is gonna need a new left side drive unit. So we just gone ahead and front probe the circuits, and um, I'm using a one of these Wacom front probe kits, and this is twofold. It, it prevents damage to the, the terminal, and it allows you to feel for proper terminal tension. You don't want to just go jamming anything into these terminals because you can damage them pretty easily, especially these ones. They're just tiny little terminals. So you're going to be easy with them. But a quick resistance check shows that we don't have any resistance here. And we'll go ahead and wiggle this in the jam. And the resistance, the resistance isn't changing. I'm not a huge fan of resistance testing, but I did want to make sure I was on the right wire before I sent a load down that thing. So 
we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and check the circuit for a short to ground and then we will load it up and make sure it can carry some current. All right, so we verified that we have no continuity to the ground. So let's go ahead and load this circuit up, make sure it can carry some current. All right, we got our circuit set for testing. We've simply gone from a ground point to that end of the circuit. Now we're up at this end of the circuit. We'll follow this down. To this lead right here. So at this point, this looks a little, sh a little shaky. Trust me, it works. Again, we have our continuity. We can see our ground. We're going from there, through the circuit, up into the tailgate, back down to here. And what I have on the tip here is a incandescent bulb. Looks a little shaky. A friend of mine made it for me. It's actually pretty slick. What we can do is if we power this, and it lights that bulb bright, we know that circuit can handle a light load. We don't want to go crazy loading this thing up because it's only a, a very small wire. So if it can handle this load, it can handle position sensor signal. So that last test just confirmed that the position sensor and this left lift strut has failed. I'm going to go ahead and tell the shop what the vehicle needs. If they decide to replace it, we'll come back and calibrate it. So the shop just replaced the lift strut and they called us back to calibrate it. In the interest of time, I just grabbed the AutoLogic just because it's quick and easy. And uh, we're going to go ahead and calibrate this lift strut. So we just run into the menu screens here. Uh, it's telling us here when it needs to be calibrated. Um, I believe this next screen is going to tell us the same thing. So yes, the service function must be performed after replacing a control unit, a drive, which we just replaced, or if there's any repairs done to the mechanism. Uh, it also notes that initialization can only be successfully performed on a trouble-free system. So we're going to go ahead and click next again. And it wants us to start with the lift gate closed, which the lift gate is closed. They actually closed it manually before we showed up. So we will click yes, it is closed. And now it wants us to open it using the push button. So we're gonna go ahead and push the button on the dash and see if it opens, which I'm expecting it will because it did initially. And it has successfully opened. So did the tailgate automatically move all the way to the top? Yes, it did. The next step is gonna check the calibration or the initialization, I should say, and it was successful. So now that the module's initialized, or the, the components initialized, we're gonna to go to the back and see if the lift gate works. Moment of truth, push the button. And it works, fantastic. Now real quick, let's go back and check out the Hall effect sensors. You remember that PID that we looked at in ISTA? Um, we could see that the left side uh, sensor wasn't counting up, so we'll go ahead and open it. And there we go, both our Hall sensors are counting up now instead of just the right one. So definitely a successful fix.